Hey everyone, it's Kenji, and today we're making some low need bread. So low need bread is a new recipe I developed for um, my New York Times column. Um, I'll link to it below. There's a paywall, so just be warned. Um, it's an adaptation, a sort of neck, um, a sort of take on Jim Leahy's No Need Bread from 2007, which um, if you're in food at all around that time, um, or even now, you're probably familiar with the recipe. Um, I also did a video on that recipe, um, or at least something similar to it, which I'll also link down below. Um, so, very, very simple bread. You only need a few tools. Um, I'll go over the tools you need first and the ingredients. Um, what you're gonna need is a sheet pan like that, um, or a baking sheet, any kind of baking sheet, things, anything like a cookie sheet would work. Um, one large oven-proof bowl, a metal bowl like this is ideal. Um, they're inexpensive. I'll link to um, where you can buy things like this, um, or if you have a restaurant supply store. Um, oven-proof metal bowl, a slightly smaller metal bowl. You're looking for one that fits inside the first one like that, okay? Um, and preferably one that's a little bit taller. They, they, they come in various shapes, so you want one that's a little bit taller. Um, the other things you'll need are a clean kitchen towel, um, and then the only real essential piece of equipment, all of this stuff you can kind of get around. There's other ways you can bake your bread or proof your bread, but the only real essential piece of equipment when baking bread is this uh, digital scale um, or, a man and any or an analog scale, um, but you need something that's gonna measure grams uh, to bake. You just you just need it, all right? Because um, otherwise you're uh, um, everything, you're guessing everything. Um, the ingredients, bread flour, um, all-purpose flour would also work, but bread flour will give you a slightly better texture in your bread. Um, instant yeast. Um, it'll also be called quick rise or rapid rise or bread machine yeast, but it'll, it, instant yeast is what you're looking for. Uh, salt, any salt will do, kosher salt, iodized salt, doesn't matter. Um, a teeny bit of vinegar or lemon juice and warm water. So this is about as warm as bath water. So here's, here we go. So what we're gonna do first, put our, our, bowl on the, our large bowl on the scale, tear it to zero, and then we're gonna add 400 grams of bread flour. And this would be the equivalent of about, you know, two and like two thirds cups. But the issue is that um, when you're measuring cups, depending on how tightly the flour is packed, you can actually get a very different amount of mass in the same cup, up to 50% different. A, a cup of flour can weigh anywhere, if we're talking ounces, it can weigh anywhere from like three, uh, three ounces to six ounces or so, depending on how you scoop it, on how strong you are and who's packing it. So you always want to measure your flour um, by weight. All right, so we're gonna zero that out again. Around 400 is close, so 402 is fine. Um, now we're gonna add two grams of yeast. So that's 0.5% yeast, okay? And we're gonna add eight grams of salt. So 2% salt. And again, rough is fine. Okay, teeny bit more. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get it off the scale I mix. I'm just gonna roughly mix all that stuff together, the salt, the yeast, and the uh, flour, just with my fingertips like that, okay? Get it back on the scale. Now, this is the only part where you do want to be relatively precise. Um, you want it to be 300 grams of water. I mean, you know, again, going off by a couple, couple grams is fine, but with 300 grams of water, so that's 75% hydration, which means that the water weighs 75% as much as the flour. So when you're, when you're talking baker's percentages, um, the flour is always 100%, no matter what amount of flour you're starting with, you consider that to be 100%. And then all your other ingredients are measured off the amount of flour you have. So in this case, it's 0.5% yeast, 2% water, 70%, 75%, uh, sorry, 0.5% yeast, 2% salt, and 75% water. Um, and that would work whether I started with 500 grams of flour or a kilogram of flour or 400 grams of flour. We're going with 400 just because that's about what makes one sort of decent sized loaf. All right, so I'm mixing it all together, just my fingertips. And now I'm basically, all I'm looking for is to get rid of, just for it to come into one single ball. I don't really care. I'm not, try, I'm not kneading at this point. I'm not really doing much work at all. Um, and that's it. So now I'm gonna scrape this off my fingertips. Try and get as much of it in there as possible. Okay, take the second bowl, invert it on top, um, and then I like to put a little bit of weight on it just to make sure there's a seal, so I'm just going to throw this bowl on this, this tray on top of there also, 
Now I'm just gonna let that sit there. Oh, uh, real quick, the water I had here that I added was at, at about bath temperature, so like around, around 100 degrees. Your goal is for the final mixture to be at around 75 degrees or so, 74 degrees. Um, again, you don't have to be super precise. Um, even if you even if it's even if you use cold water, the recipe will work. Um, the reason I'm using warmer water is because today I'm trying to get this whole thing done done and baked in about five or six hours, as opposed to giving it overnight. Um, but I'll tell you when in the process you can let it ferment overnight or let it sit in your fridge and bake the next day if that's something you want to do it'll slightly improve the flavor and texture if you do that actually um, so real quick the way no need bread works um, so typically um, you know when, when I was growing up the way I, I thought you make bread is you you mix flour and water and you knead it and knead it and knead it and if it's really sticky you add more flour until it comes into and forms a cohesive ball um, and I always ended up with this really dense bread um, the way most sort of artisan bakers uh, and even you know ancient bakers do creating these sort of rustic loaves with big hole structure um, with large bubbles and stuff inside them um, with those types of breads you don't want to really do too much kneading um, you really want to let the yeast do the work for you the yeast and the enzyme so you're you, you're sort of more like the like the general contractor the, the conductor of the orchestra and, and the yeast um, are the ones doing all the you're, you're the capitalist and the yeast are the ones are the laborers and you're you're reaping the benefits of their labor um, so really what you're doing is you're um, as the dough sits as the as the flour um, the hydrated flour sits um, there's enzymes in there that will break down some of the larger protein structures in there um, and then those protein structures and specifically two proteins called gliadin and gluten and can then um, form these disulfide bonds, these bond together um, and form like a matrix, uh, a strong protein matrix, which is called gluten. Um, and that's what's going to trap air bubbles. That's what's going to give your bread structure. Um, you can do that by kneading, but you can also just let it sit there. Um, and what happens is the enzymes break down the larger protein structures into these small ones that then cross-link very easily. Um, it's sort of like if you have like a fleet of Lego spaceships and you want to convert them into lego castles like the first thing you have to do is break down the lego spaceships into their individual pieces so then you can build the castle so you could do that yourself or like you can let your toddler into the room and tell them to go stomp all over it um to control to break down the lego so that then you can come back and build structure out of them but instead of you coming back to build structure out of them um, what you're actually doing is you're letting the yeast build most of that structure so the yeast as they digest sugars um, they're going to produce carbon dioxide bubbles and alcohol um, and what happens is that the um, those bubbles uh, the action of those bubbles forming and kind of moving through the dough actually does the kneading for you um, that's how the basic no knead recipe works um, this one we're also going to give it a little hand you'll, I'll show you in a little bit um, but you're going to give it a hand by kind of coming in and folding and stretching the dough just a few times very very low effort um, it, it just takes a little bit of effort during the first couple hours every 15 or 20 minutes um, the one ingredient I forgot to add is vinegar um, so it's all right it'll still work just fine but um, vinegar any kind of acid so vinegar um, you can use powdered acetic acid you can use uh, lemon juice um, you just need parts per million. So for something like this, even like a, a, a few drops, like from an eyedropper, um, you know, up to like an eighth teaspoon or something, something that's not going to affect the flavor. Um, the vinegar, the acidity is actually going to help the um, the gluten form. It'll make the it'll make the dough stronger, um, which is a trick I learned from uh, Francisco Megoya over at the uh, you know, Modernist Bread, Modernist Modernist Cuisine Labs. Um, anyhow. This has been sitting for about five minutes or so already, so I'm going to let it sit for another um, anywhere between you know 25 minutes to uh, anywhere between 15 minutes to 45 minutes total is fine. So I'm going to let this sit for about another 10 minutes, and then I'll show you what I've got. All right, so we'll be back in just about. Hey, this is Kenji from the editing room, future Kenji. Um, I actually lost one clip where I showed how you uh, do the first set of folds in the dough. So what you're about to see is actually the second time I did this. Um, but it's basically the same thing. All you do is moisten your hands with water, stretch the dough over itself a few times, um, and you'll see. But um, yeah, I lost one clip. Sorry about that. All right, back to past me. Another 15, 20 minutes. Take this off again. Dough's starting to look nice and kind of slack and smooth, which is what we're looking for. Same basic thing. We're just going to pull up the edges, work all the way around. Shape it into a little ball. You don't even really have to do that ball shaping thing. I just like to do it. Um, but really the important part is just kind of stretching. And what you're doing every time you're stretching is you're helping um, form that gluten. You're giving that gluten a little bit more strength so that the dough will come out a little bit stronger and tighter and hold its shape a little better. 
as it bakes. All right, so now we're gonna go back another, another 20 minutes. Um, all right, so. Same thing. I'm not gonna show you all these, by the way. I'll do this the la one last time here, and then you can just assume that I'm doing basically the same thing every time. But as you can see, each time I do this, the dough becomes stretchier, sort of more supple like this, smoother, and it you know, starts to resemble a dough that you've actually kneaded for a while or you know, stuck in your stand mixer for a while. And that's all thanks to those enzymes and that yeast. Um, and that's all there is to it. All right, so we're gonna let this, I'll do this a few more times over the next couple of hours. I will spare you and not show you every time, but I will come back when it's all done and ready to proof. All right, so I'll be back in the next day. So as it turned out, life happened yesterday. A bunch of things, uh, unexpected things came up, so I wasn't able to bake the bread as planned. So what I did instead was after a few turns, I stuck it in the fridge, um, which is actually turns out, you know, the bread actually comes out a little bit better if you let it rest overnight in the fridge. Um, but this is what it looks like after those initial, you know, four to five stretch and fold steps um, and then after it's been in the fridge overnight. Um, once it's been in the fridge overnight, when you're ready to bake it the next day, just anywhere between say like three to eight hours um, of when you're going to bake it, um, of when you want it to come out of the oven, uh, sorry, no, when you want to put it in the oven, pull it out of the fridge, and then you want to just let it sit for um, a minimum of one hour to come up to room temperature before you start to shape it for its final proof. Um, but it can be any, you can let it sit anywhere between one hour and say six hours or so. Um, and then it's gonna proof for two hours and then it'll bake. So now I pulled this out. I'm just gonna let it sit on the countertop. I'm gonna go about the rest of my morning. Um, and in a couple hours I will come back and I will show you um, how to shape it for its final proof. All right, so I'll be back in seven or eight hours. So life happened again. I went out to, um, the tide pools with my daughter and I forgot about this bread, but this will only, it's fine. It'll only go to show um, how uh, foolproof this all is. And yeah, so okay, so this is what it's been doing after it's been in the fridge all night and then sitting out um, all day on the counter. You can see how active it is um, and how stretchy that dough is, look at that. Um, so what we're doing now is we're gonna proof it, which means um, proofing is when you, is sort of the final step uh, when you shape the dough and let it rise one last time so that um, you can bake it. <clears throat> so what we're doing, that bowl that I had, that sort of shallow, uh, sorry, the deep, smaller bowl, that's what we're gonna proof in, um, and that's gonna help it get a nice shape to it. All right, so I got this dish towel, clean dish towel, um, recently washed, obviously not brand new, it doesn't have to be brand new, just recently washed is fine. We're gonna coat it pretty heavily with a layer of flour, so that as the bread rises in it, it doesn't, uh, stick to the cotton. Um, and you know, you can do this with a clean dish towel or you can just have sort of a dedicated towel that you do this with every time if you bake a lot of bread. Um, and the more you do it, the uh, the easier it's gonna become, the less it's gonna stick. Oh, what's up Alicia, hold on one second. All right, sorry about that. Uh, my daughter is having trouble with her show again. She's watching Waffles and Mochi, which is a great show. All right, so the more you do this, um, the better the cloth is gonna get and the more, the less flour you're gonna have to use. Um, a lot of people use a combination of rice flour and wheat flour. You can do that if you want. Um, it it, it'll, it'll give you slightly better results because the um, rice flour doesn't hydrate as much as the wheat flour does, so it doesn't really affect the dough as much as wheat flour does, but wheat flour works fine. All right, so we're gonna stick the towel in here, floured side up, line the bowl with it, and the excess flour we're just gonna shake onto our board here because we're, that's where we're going to be shaping our bread. All right, so my hand already has some flour in it, so I'm just gonna kinda quickly and gently pull it and do one last stretch and folding step to shape this, okay? We're gonna dump it out here, okay? Now, we're gonna kind of pinch it all together, and that's gonna be our seam. <clears throat> and now what we can do, flip it over so that the smooth side is up, and what we wanna do is kind of get like a, a smooth, stretched skin over the dough. And you can see how I'm doing this kind of with the sides of my hands. You don't really have to pick it up. You don't have to maneuver too much, just like that, so that you get a nice smooth skin over the top. And that's gonna form um, the, the sort of ball of dough we're looking for. 
All right, that's all. You don't really don't want to overhandle your dough too much um, at this stage, really. It should only take you like 30 to 45 seconds or so. It might have taken me a little bit longer because I was talking. And then we'll pinch this seam side. We'll pinch this side together a little bit. Um, it doesn't matter how rough you are with this. I mean, sorry, it doesn't matter how precise you are with this. Um, you can be rough. All you want it to do is sort of stick together, all right? And then we're going to pick it up and we're gonna put it in this this flower, this flowered cloth with the pinched side, the seam side down, just like that. Okay, and now we're gonna take our rimmed baking sheet. Again, you can use a cookie sheet, you can use a half sheet pan like I'm using. Um, aluminum is what we're looking for, but any, any kind of cookie sheet like that, and we're just going to place this right on top and that's it. So now we're gonna let this sit here. It's going to proof, we're looking for it to basically double or so in volume, it'll, it'll fill up most of the bowl, it may, might not come up to the edge, but it'll, it'll double in volume. Um, and at normal room temperature, that should take about two hours, but if you have a very hot house, it might take a little bit less. If you have a very cold house, it might take a little bit longer, but we're looking at around two hours here, all right? So I will be back now in just about two hours. All right, so here we are. The bread has, uh, the dough is just about doubled in size, all right? Um, and now, so normally when you're making, oh, and I've also, I pre-started preheating my oven, um, 500 degrees. I started preheating it about half an hour ago. Oh, sorry, I was baking a pizza also, so I'm gonna, let me move that pizza steel out of the way. You don't need this for, for this bread. And actually we want, we want the space, so I'm gonna take this oven rack out also. Um, all right, so you want an oven rack, kind of in the lower middle position. Preheat the oven, 500 degrees for um, for at least half an hour before you're about to bake it. Um, so normally uh, with the traditional no-knead bread recipe, Leahy's recipe in 2007, what you would do is you would um, put a Dutch oven in there. So you would take a really heavy pot with a lid and you would preheat it at 500 degrees for about 45 minutes. And then what you would do is you would take it out, take the lid off, pick up your dough, plop it in there and throw it back in. Um, the reason you do that is because in a professional oven, um, a professional bakery, you inject the oven with steam. Um, so you actually replace all of the air in there with steam. Um, and the reason you do that is because steam, first of all, transfers heat much more efficiently than um, hot air does. The moister the air, the um, the, hot, the more it transfers heat. That's why humid days feel hotter than, uh, than drier days. Yeah, you can go out, Shabu, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, uh, and the other thing that it does is that the humidity j actually gelatinizes the starch on the surface of the dough so that um, it stays softer and more supple. Um, and the reason both those things are important is because you want what's called oven spring, which is um, as the as the bread heats up, as the dough heats up, um, the air inside it, the carbon dioxide produced by the yeast, um, as well as the water vapor, will expand, um, and that's what causes the bread to kind of puff up and uh, get its shape and, and, and makes it so that it's not dense. Um, so you need really moist air. Um, a regular home oven uh, cannot capture moisture. Even if you put like, um, you know, like ice cubes in the bottom or if you put a tray of water or whatever, a home oven vents out the back. Um, and that's because in a home oven, the gas and the area where you're cooking are all in the, basically the same space. They're, I mean, they're, they're divided by oven walls, but all those places are interconnected. So as gas combusts, um, it produces carbon monoxide um, as well as water. Um, and so that water and carbon monoxide need to vent out. And so ovens are actually, home ovens are designed to vent steam out. So you're never gonna be able to capture steam efficiently in a home oven, uh, no matter what you do. No matter how much steam you produce in there, it's not gonna be enough. You're always gonna be venting it out and the oven's always gonna be pulling in air from the outside. So what, a, what preheating a Dutch oven in there does is that you put the bread, the dough in there, um, it produces its own steam and you slap, slap the lid on. And so the steam that the bread produces, it's the dough produces, is enough to um, create that moist, steamy environment. And that's sort of one of the breakthrough cool techniques that you see in an oven. Um, it's also what you could do with like a like a clay cloche or a German like Romertop style ceramic baker. Um, 
the problem with it, of course, is that um, the Dutch oven itself is very hot. Um, I, you know, in, in the past however many years, 13, 14 years that I've been baking bread in this way, um, I've burned myself a few times. I've accidentally um, dropped my dough and, uh, against the lip of the Dutch oven. I've accidentally degassed the dough as I was putting in so it comes out like a pancake. Um, so the, the method that I've come up with in order to um, prevent yourself from doing that is that you take your sheet tray, you get the uh, bowl that the, the dough has risen in, you get your sheet tray, flip it together, and this way, you don't have to ever handle the dough yourself, okay? It's all, all done without human, without any human contact of any kind. All right, so you, you got your dough there, you take your cloth off, and now we're gonna take that other big bowl, the one that we had um, the dough rising in earlier, we're gonna get some water in there, dump it out. You just want a little bit of moisture on the inside of that. And now we're gonna flip this right over the top, okay? And now we're gonna put this whole thing in the oven like that. And what that big bowl and the moist, uh, the moisture on the big bowl is going to steam. It's gonna create, create steam underneath that bowl. Um, and so that's the steam environment where we're gonna bake our bread, at least start baking our bread. Um, so we preheat it to 500. I'm gonna lower the temperature now to 450. Otherwise the bottom of the bread burns. Um, and we're just gonna let that bake under the cover for about 20 minutes, all right? All right, so I will see you in 20 minutes. So at this point, we get two towels and we take off the bowl. Ooh, all right, there you go. So you can see how nicely this has sprung. Um, and it's kind of splitting along the, um, the seams where uh, um, you had, um, this the seems what you had pinched together earlier, and that's good. That allows it to expand, that allows the steam to escape, and it also gives it this kind of nice rustic look to it. So you see it has this kind of glossy, shiny appearance, and you're starting to get these little micro blisters, but there's not much browning because things don't brown in moist air very well. So now we take off the cover, and we close it, and we let it bake until it browns. So like another probably 15 to 20 minutes, all right? And that's about it. So I will see you in another 20 minutes. All right, so our bread is pretty much done. You can bake it darker or lighter if you want. Around here looks good to me. Oh man, doesn't that look good? Doesn't that look good? Yeah, look at that. You can see all these little bl micro blisters. Nice. Nice crust. All right, so we're gonna do what the bakers recommend that you do, which is we're going to let this rest until it's cooled before we cut into it because if you cut into it now the inside's still going to be kind of gummy of course bread fresh out of the oven is really good so if you want to cut into it go for it but i'm going to wait until it cools down um so this is going to be the final final break in this video um and i will see you when this bread cools down uh which will be i don't know uh after i put my daughter to bed and we'll have this for breakfast tomorrow all right i will see you now in oh wait hold it hold on a second can you hear this? Can you hear that crackle? Shh. Listen to that. That's the crackle of this really crispy crust. As the bread cools down, the steam inside kind of contracts again and the crust, the crust starts to crackle. Here, listen to it. That's the sound of good bread. All right, I'll see you very soon, all right? <laughs> it's been a while. Um, sorry, all right, life happened one last time. My daughter's having some trouble going to bed, so I was help, trying to help her out with that. But here we go. Here's our bread, cool, ready to eat. We'll have it tomorrow. We'll, I'll toast some of this for breakfast tomorrow, but I'll just cut it open and show you what I got, okay? Oh, you hear that crust? Shabba, you hear that crust? You hear that? All right, moment of truth, ready? Look at that, gorgeous. Gorgeous. And, you know, baking it under that dome so with the steam, that's what gives you this sort of crackly, crackly crust as opposed to um, like a, a sort of thicker, 
um, crunchier crust, drier crust that you would get if you didn't um, bake with steam like that. Look at that. Lovely. That's it. And as you clearly saw, even if you get interrupted, even if you have to change your plans, um, a recipe like this, uh, it's going to work out. Um, and uh, uh, again, linking to the recipe below, um, there is a paywall, sorry, but um, uh, you know, there's instructions there for where you can adapt, where you can take time, where you should um, be precise. Um, but mainly the things you want to be precise with are weighing out your ingredients, um, and that's about it. Everything else you can sort of adapt depending on what happens during your day, when you want to bake it, what your specific parameters are at home. Mm. Super simple. Not quite no need, but low need bread. Um, there you go. All right, guys, gals, non-binary pals, I will see you next time. Bye-bye. It's doing it even more now. Listen, listen. That snap crackle pop. What do you think, Shawn? All right. Hey everyone, it's Kenji. There are 22 million kids in this country that rely on school lunches for nutritious meals. And with schools closed now more than ever, organizations like No Kid Hungry can use their support. So I'm asking you to join me uh, click the link in the description below to donate some money. No amount is too small or too big. Thank you very much and stay safe. Bye-bye.